Hey everyone, I'm Leah and today we're going to do a quick update on the new Flights of Fancy from Wet n Wild. Um, I did do a first impressions when it came out, I think about a week ago, and I was okay with it. I wasn't super keen, especially on the eyeshadow palette. In that video I tried the... No, it doesn't even have the name on it. Oh gosh. Alright, so in my last video I used the palette Flock Party, I'll show you right here, and I was not like super impressed. The shadows were really faint, especially the lighter shades were super, super faint. And then this, this burgundy shade, which I thought was going to be pretty incredible, was almost no payoff at all, and it went onto my eyelids almost like an orangish warm color instead of like this nice pinky burgundy that I was expected. However, I did try the other palette, which is called, sorry, I took the stickers off, I'm just looking at my phone. This palette is called Stop Ruffling My Feathers, and really, really pretty colors, and I was hoping that it would be, I don't know, better than the other one, just, I don't know why, I figured it would be similar formulas, but I thought, hey, we'll try it just in case, and do you know what? This palette is way better. There is a third palette called Hasta La Costa, baby. I'll show you on my phone here, so it's got some blues and some purples and then just some normal transition and brow, uh, brow shades. Um, but that's not one that was available to me at Superstore when I went and picked these up. And to be honest, it's probably not one that I would have grabbed anyway just because I don't tend to gravitate towards blue eyeshadows. Uh, with my green eyes, it just tends to look a little bit weird and like I'm trying to do something that I shouldn't be trying to do. So anyway, I'm just going to slap this on my eyes just to show you guys the difference um, in the other one. Just go ahead and check out the other video. You'll see how not super duper it was, but this was only $3.38, like Canadian. So I don't know, $2.50 US. So I guess I shouldn't have had very high expectations, but sometimes Wet n Wild stuff is really, really good and it's really inexpensive. So anyway, Enough all that, let's go ahead and slap some of this on the eyes. So starting with my Sigma E40, I'm going to take the transition shade here. It's nice that they're all labeled for you and as well, they do give you like one eye look on the back showing you like one, two, three, four, where to place them all and then they kind of tell you which one is which. So that is kind of nice. There is a ton of kick, kick up, <laughs> it's a ton of kick up in the transition shade just like in the other palette. but. That's okay, because then it kind of gives you a bunch of pigment to work with. You don't have to dip in too much. Like already, this palette is so much better than the other one. I don't know, I don't know why that is. So I'm going to go into what they call the eyelid color here, which is sort of this like weird sheeny pinky gold, like they kind of got the rose gold thing going on, and they did kind of a good job. So I did use my finger with the last application. I'm going to try a Sigma E55. Yeah, that's not working at all. Okay, so we're going to do the finger. I am going to take the uh, Photo Focus Wet n Wild Primer Spray I picked up. It's part of this collection. Uh, I did look up the ingredients because I was a little bit curious, like why, you know, we should use a primer water, what what's good about it, if it's putting anything good on my skin. And the ingredients are... Not ideal. The only thing that I could read is water, castor oil, citric acid, and then some weird form of mushroom. So I thought that was kind of interesting. Um, they do say on the website that you can use it to prime, to spritz throughout the day for a refresher or as a setting spray. So it's probably something that I will use as either a setting spray or like a refresher mist throughout the day. I'm not sure that I want to be slapping all those chemicals on my bare skin. Let me just pull up my phone really quickly and show you the terrifying ingredients list here. So the description is to give your skin some love with a few spritzes of perfection that will keep you refreshed and glowing all summer long. Lightweight primer spray can be used to set, sorry, <clears throat> lightweight primer spray can be used to prep, set, and for a fresh makeup throughout the day. Claims hypoallergenic, fragrance-free, paraben-free, gluten-free, cruelty-free, vegan, dermatologist tested, and clinically tested. So those are all good things. But then we get to the ingredients list. And we've got water, and then alcohol, and then butylene glycol, and then fomus officinalis, mushroom extract, and then like just a bunch of things that I can't read. And I don't know if I want to put that on my face. So, like I said, I probably will just use that as like a refresher or a misting spray throughout the day and just continue with my primers that 
I know and love and I'm not afraid of. So getting back into this, I'm not getting a whole lot of payoff. It's just not happening. So just digging in a little bit more with my finger. I was able to do like a really good look with this the first time that I used it, but it's like now that I'm digging into this palette, like nothing, nothing's happening. Like I'm, I'm really digging in and there's like nothing on there. So compared to the transition shade, which, you know, does a whole lot more and you get a bunch of kick up. I don't know why I did that. So eyelid color is on and I'm just going to pick up the crease shade, which is this really nice, like kind of reddish bronzy color. Here, I'll swatch it really quick. This one actually swatches pretty good and applies a little bit better than the lighter than the lighter shades. Still just using my finger because these do not work with brushes. And I'm just going to pat it on top here. And what this is giving me is just like this sort of pinky reddish unicorny kind of glow. When I first did this look, I asked my boyfriend, I was like, how's my eye makeup? And he was like, light and airy. And I was like, whew, excellent description. Thank you very much. Going back into the, uh, the eyelid shade here and I'm just going to rub it under my eyes. Just get a little bit of dimension in there. And back on the lid as well. The shade is really, really pretty. It would be so amazing if this were a slightly better quality eyeshadow because this, this color in particular is <laughs> so pretty but it just really doesn't do a whole lot. So that's kind of a bummer. We're gonna try a little bit of setting spray. I just have like cheapo essence. This is what I like to use for my brushes and wetting my Sigma E55. Ugh, that was a lot. Let's see if that works. Going in. This is not, oh, it's doing something. Wetting the brush definitely helped, but you're still not getting like a ton, a ton of color. So if you're going for like all out glam or something really, really wild, this is not the palette to use, just FYI. But if you're going for something cheap and light and breezy and airy and fairy, this is your palette. So I am still trying out from the same collection, the Flights of Fancy, the Baked Blush in Don't Flutter Yourself. This is really close to being a highlighter. There's tons of shimmer and sheen in it, but it's a really pretty pink goldy color and the bird on there, nothing wrong with that. It's so pretty. So I do like to use this as a topper instead. And I'm just gonna lay down a little bit of my Tarte Am Amazonian Clay in the shade Concept using a nice, uh, flat sided brush here from Real Techniques and just popping a little bit really specifically on my cheeks here. I just want to have a base. This stuff lasts forever. So because this stuff doesn't, uh, it's really nice to have like a, another blush uh, base down and then just to use this as a topper. I'm going to use a little bit of a fluffier brush so we don't get like crazy heavy application and just lightly dust that over top. This is also going to start to be part of your highlight as well. You will notice. Very, very pretty though. Very, very summer glam. And because I'm just a little bit extra and I'm not highlighted enough already, just hopping into my Urban Decay by Kristen Leanne, my favorite highlight palette right now. And I'm going to swirl together these two shades right here. And using my Sigma P82, this is such a good brush. I was just put that on my eyes. I was like, woo, let's party. And I'm just going to put it up in here, right where I can feel my orbital bone. I've already got highlight kind of down my cheek from the blush, so we're just going to keep this nice and high. A little bit on the nose and the cupid's bow. And then, of course, let's go up in here a little bit. And just swooping it on the inner corner as well. Tying everything all together. All right, everybody, that's it for today's video. This is just a quick follow-up to the Wet n Wild Flights of Fancy collection using the second palette. The Stop Ruffling My Feathers, definitely better than the other one. I believe it's called Flock Party. So if you're inclined to pick up one of these palettes, this one might be a better option. It just has a lot more color payoff. And even though I struggled a little bit with the eyelid shade, it's definitely worth it because I haven't really found any other color that's super similar to that. So 
If you like this video, give it a like. Hopefully you'll subscribe and hopefully I will see you all in my next video. Aloha.